Uh, great song, great song. That's cut so deep from Snake Root. Uh, the album is Downtown to Ghetto. Yeah. Um, so where did the um, where did the um, um, title come from? What was the idea of the title? To be honest with you, we didn't think about that first. But <laughs> <laughs> that title comes from again one of our songs. Actually, it's some of the lyrics in Another Day Without End. Right, right. Okay, so basically that'll be that's but that'll be classed as the title track then. Uh, not really, but no. uh, to, to be honest with you, the idea behind that was we never wanted to use one of the titles. Yeah. For the whole album, so we decided to do something from us, but yeah. not one of the song titles. So we just chose from the lyrics. That's a good idea. Yeah, good idea. A lot of bands do that. Um, you know, exactly. to make it, you know, to make it a more um, um, interesting, <laughs> to you know, rather than just use a song title. Exactly. Um, you know, and it's um, it's a bit, um, now. Do you have? A, I mean, is this album out in um, CD format or is it just a download? Not at the moment. It's only digital sales at the moment. Yeah, just digital. Yeah, it's very. Uh, you know, a lot of independent bands can't afford to do the CD out route. You know, because it's quite expensive to produce a CD. Well, actually, I mean, uh, you can still do that. Yeah. There are still some companies that so you can just go with the distribution. But the, mm. uh, but the difficult thing behind that is if you can't really promote that, yeah. and, uh, it will not be uh, good for the band in any way. Yeah. So yeah, well, we decided not to wait for it yeah. and just go with the digital. But, of course, we want to do that um physical distribution uh, as well yeah. I, I mean a lot of people like the physical thing and it's also very good when you're actually out on the road and you're playing a gig you've got say look I've, um, please buy some of the band's merchandise uh, yes you know t-shirts t-shirts and cds are available at the shop at the back you know things like that you know it makes it a lot better for um, um to help sales <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> to uh, make money. You know, we're all in this business. We don't. We, you know, we, we. If you're in the business to actually make a lot of money, then um, we're all in the wrong business, I think. But uh, if you if you wanna if you wanna make a little bit of money, at least make your money back. Um, and that's the right the way to go. But um, yeah, how how's it been received? How are how are fans are, uh, taking the album? Are they liking it? Well, we have never heard anything negative so far. That's good. But, uh, but that's a good thing for the start. Yeah. But um, to be honest with you, uh, we don't know much about the sales at the moment. Yeah. Because uh, because of the rules of the distributors, we only get reports after a certain period of time. Yeah. And uh, but for the fans, what we have heard so far is they liked it. That's what yeah. we heard. Yeah. And uh, we'll see how, how it works when we start the tour. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, when's, when's the tour starting? We're planning to uh, start with Turkey in March yeah. and um, probably and hopefully we'll be able to do some kind of little tour in Europe after, think, um, after June or July. I think you'll go down well in Europe. You know, some of the rock, the, you know, the big, big rock clubs in uh, Europe are, are screaming for this kind of music and... Uh, you know, there's very little good rock music, um, live uh, rock. You know, there's some very, very good rock bands now coming out of um, coming out of the woodwork. You know, where I think it went a bit stale for a while, didn't it? Rock music well, in general. Uh, I think so. I agree with you. The only the only problem with uh, touring is there are too many bands. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Marketing is is crazy right now. Yeah. That's something I really can't understand some of the time because yeah. uh, radio promotions are difficult, touring is difficult, everything yeah. depends on money. Yeah, and exactly. That's, yeah, exactly. That's not the good thing. Yeah. And um, for most of the musicians, this is maybe the worst part of it. Exactly. Because, yeah. because I mean, you have to make money in order to promote your sales, your tours, and yeah. merchandise, etc. Yeah. So everything is vice versa, and everything. Yeah comes up with financial problems and then the catch 22 you've got to have money to make money exactly uh, you know <laughs> so, you, but, um, uh, you know that you know I, I always find you know i, I mean because as musicians we're not really built as musicians i'm a musician myself and we're not built as business people we're artistic um we, we like to express ourselves through our what we do what we do music or you know in writing 
and uh, in performance. And when it comes down to the business side, you know, generally we're not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, so uh, you know, I think I think you know that's where people you know you need we need help um, from other agencies out there, and there are people out there. I, I, I would imagine you know. Um, have you found a promoter? Actually, we are uh, working with uh, a promoter at the moment, and yeah. uh, I think you already know uh, Rob Saunders from Oh Map. yes, yes, Rob Saunders. He's a great guy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, he works. He works tirelessly for indie artist. Very, very good artist. Yes, and actually, he just finds out the talent somewhere, and uh, he has his own ways to promote them. Yeah. And uh, we have been so happy with his promotion so far, but uh, we're just trying to expand our uh, promotions, uh, not only to radio, but also like yeah. uh, written materials, like magazines, yeah. some internet blogs, yeah. and yeah. I think uh, we will just do this in March because we're now working on a video, our first video. Oh, and, wow. Uh, cool. We just want to uh, combine that with other promotions yeah. in March. Yeah. And so hopefully uh, we will be releasing it in March. Oh, cool. So which songs get in the video treatment? Uh, I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's going to be a surprise then for March. Okay, let's just make it a surprise. Yeah, that's but good. you will be one of the first who will hear about this. Oh, cool! I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so um, if you if you're in Turkey, where 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 can what's it? What's have you got any towns booked for the tour yet? Actually, this is the time we're working on the schedule. Right. And, uh, we have our. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Yeah. Okay, because there was kind of buzzing here. Yeah. <laughs> Our booking agent is working on this, oh, yeah. and uh, we're just planning to announce the dates again in the beginning of March. Good, good. I think you'll go down well. I really, really do. Um, you know, because I think you've got all the credentials. I th I, there's no reason why. You know, I, I'm surprised actually that you haven't been snapped up because you've got a good sound. You have a very, very good sound, uh, which uh, it sort of puts a lot of mainstream artists to shame. To be honest. Well, um, I think uh, at this point the credit also should go to our producer because the thing is, uh, what makes us really independent is the way that we're really independent in terms of having no contract with any label. Yeah. But the way it was recorded was definitely not independent because yeah. um, when you think about most of the independent bands, most of the stuff recorded are just uh, um, usually. You know, They're home recordings, home recordings uh, and yeah. self-produced. Yeah. But this was not recorded and produced that way. No. So I think that's why the credit should go to Jenk. And um, that's something we owe to him, I guess. Well, he, he understands He understands the music scene and he understands the sound that people want. And uh, you've got that nice fat sound, you know, that uh, is hard to get in a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know, definitely it's... not do that. Even yeah. if the technology is good now, but yeah, oh, you still not do that. Technology is phenomenal. It doesn't cost a fortune either um, nowadays. But um, uh, uh, at the same but time, you still I need to need to know how to use it. You okay. need to know how to use it. Yeah, if they, if only somebody would come up with some software that is easy to read. And easy to understand. Then I think there'll be a lot of very happy musicians out there. <laughs> have you ever have you ever read the instructions for um, for for the something like Pro Tools or Sonar or um, one of those uh, um, particular <laughs> things? It's like yeah, reading, it's like reading something in Chinese. You know, it might as well be in Chinese because it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> it really is. I I've never I've never been good at reading those stuff because. I just what I just like experimenting, you know. Yeah, that's and how I love. Just learn it by uh, using it, but yeah. reading that's, it is just a pain. Yeah, that to me that's that's that becomes a, a rather unsatisfactory job of work for me um, is reading the manual. Um, so um, I like I'm like you. I end up um, uh, learning it by ear and uh, watching, finding, experimenting basically, and seeing what something does. And probably I'm only learning about ten percent of what it's capable of, <laughs> you know. But um, at the same time, that's how you you know 
but it gets better and better every time you try it. So let's take another word. Let's play another song on the album. This is the song I was talking about, Runaway City. Now, um, who who writes the the music? Do you all take part in writing as a five piece band? Do you all write together? Uh, well, actually, in the beginning, we were not five. Yeah. And so uh, most of the songs were written by myself and Bulent, our singer. Right. And also uh, Ali, our bass player, yeah. uh, he contributed to two or three songs. And uh, three songs were also contributed by our producer. Yeah. So um, I could say most of the songs were written by myself and our singer, Bulent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you're um, writing a song, you know, I mean, you know, I hear a lot of songwriters, and as a songwriter myself, you know, I like to tell a story. Um, you know, paint a picture in words um, throughout the song, to you know, to, for the listener um, to actually sort of imagine what the song's about, basically. And I think when you listen to a song, everybody makes something out of a different, you know, something different out of whatever the song's about. But when you, for instance, write the song, what, what, like with Runaway City, who wrote Runaway City? Is that one of yours? Uh, actually, this song, uh, most of it was written by Goulette. Right. And uh, what I did for the song was the, some of the intros, and I helped him writing the lyrics. Yeah. And um, But most of the music was written by Goulette for the song. Right, right. So do you, do you, what, what does, I mean, you know, when you, when you think of the song, you know, what's the song about for you? Is it about running away to a different part of the world, or? Well, actually, this song... Uh, change a lot in time. In the yeah. beginning, it was a kind of love song, mm. but uh, we were not really happy with how it went. Yeah. So we just wanted to change the lyrics a bit. Yeah. And uh, in the end, it just um, became a kind of tragedy. Uh, yeah. It's a tragic song, actually, yeah. because the, the lyrics are about a murder. Oh. I don't know if you have seen the lyrics. I never actually saw. I never actually um, saw that in the lyrics. But yeah, now I think about it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's about a murder. It's a murder. Uh, a, a guy is just murdering his wife. Yeah. And just trying to run away. But what is given in the song is even if you can run away, yeah, you cannot run away from your conscience. No. Oh, very deep. Very deep. Yeah. Yeah.